one. What's the address of your emergency? Bodies and I don't know what to do. What's your location? Where are you? Oswego High School. Can you see how many cars are involved? And how many people are injured? Is everyone awake? No, no, no. No? Okay. All right, we're going to get some help to you, okay? Just stay right there. I want you to call us back if anything changes. All right. Oswego City Rescue Metro Ambulance, for a two-car MBA with injuries, possible unconscious party. At the Oswego High School off of Liberty Street. Oswego High School off Liberty Street. Time out, 811. As we heard, calls were made to dispatch. Two vehicle MBA. Laws first arrived on scene. EMS and fire. I just heard a crash. Officer arrived on scene, assessed the situation, requesting more units. As you can see now, it's identified. We have victim and the arm amputation is going to apply a tourniquet to stop the bleeding, hopefully save this person.
after the officer spoke with the driver, the vehicle that caused the crash, determined that he'd been drinking tonight. We will now begin running him through SFSTs, which are our standard field sobriety test. We will perform the HGN, horizontal gaze astagmus test, walk and turn test, and one flag and stand. While he does that, the investigator will continue to investigate the scene and fire any EMS personnel of
the officer has determined that the driver is intoxicated. He will take him into custody. He will bring him back to the police department, process him, and get him arraigned. So what the fire department is doing is they're going to remove the roof of the vehicle in order to get the critically injured out with the least amount of injury to those people.
As you can see, both patients have been removed from the vehicle, placed on stretchers. They will be transported to the trauma center in Syracuse to be treated. Investigator just spoke with the caller to find out any information that could be helpful for the case. Now that all the patients have been removed from the vehicles, and now work on removing the deceased from the hood of the vehicle, law will contact the on-duty coroner who will respond to the scene and begin investigations.
first has arrived on scene. Sill tape moving deceased from the scene.
All right, this concludes the outdoor portion. We're gonna proceed with the indoor portion at Layton Gym. So if you can kindly make All right, guys, good morning. My name is Stacy Lighthall. I am a senior probation officer with the Oswego County Probation Officer. I have been an officer there for 17 years. I have helped out with our Oswego County Soft DWI program for the last 11 years as a volunteer, and this year I was lucky enough to pick up this program, so now I am our Oswego County Soft DWI educator. All right, so following a party where alcohol had been consumed, a fellow classmate has made the decision to climb behind the wheel of a car to drive himself and several friends home. Unfortunately, they never made it there. The collision you witnessed is just the start of the aftermath that will be faced by these students and the community. Because the collision has resulted in a fatality, officers will have to make a death notification to the family of the deceased. Mr. and Mrs. Katie, my name is Wes Gager and from the Oswego Police Department. I regret to inform you, your son's been in an accident today. It was an accident involving a drunk driver as he passed through the vehicle. There's no easy way to tell you that he's seen his dead as a result of that accident. His body is going to be transported to the medical examiner's office in Honda County. We're here to help you through this. If you have any questions for me. Is anybody else in the car? There's multiple people in the vehicle, yes. He's a passenger in the car. Like I said, we're here. If you need anything, just give us a call again. We'll keep you updated. Once officers positively identify the person they that has been killed, they face the difficult task of providing family members information about the crash, where it happened, how it happened, whether it was the result of a criminal act, and if an arrest has been made. During the notification process, the family has provided information as to where the body was taken, so they may begin the task of planning funeral services. The notification will occur within several hours of the crash. At the same time, our drunk driver has been arrested and will be taken before a judge for arraignment. An arraignment is the first step in a criminal proceeding where the defendant is brought in front of the court to hear all charges against them and to enter a plea.
All right, so when we have, what, we, what you guys are going to see next is the, uh, the drunk driver is going to be brought in by the Oswego uh, City Police Department. They're going to have to be brought in front of a judge in order to be read the charges. So in this case, what the charges are going to be, they're going to have to do with the drunk driving. Um, also, if he was found with anything else on him at the time, if he had any drugs, uh, they will also have to um, make a determination based on the fact that there was a fatality in this. So that's going to increase the charges. All rise. Everybody stand up. Thank you. you. May be seated. Good morning. You're here for an arraignment. Arraignment is simply a process to make you aware of the charges before you. You understand that? You have a right to an attorney at this and every stage of the proceeding. Do you understand that? Mr. Rose is here with you today. Uh, you've had an opportunity to discuss this with him at least briefly, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Rose, how do you wish to proceed? Uh, we'll wait before we're reading the accusatory is under plea of not guilty. Okay. So. Mr. Fitzgerald, you're charged with vehicular manslaughter in the second degree. <clears throat> a person is guilty of vehicular manslaughter in the second degree when he or she causes the death of another person and either operates a motor vehicle in violation of section 2344A or 11, section 1192 of vehicle and traffic law or operates a vessel or public vessel in violation of paragraph B, C, or D. To wit, on 5-17-2024, at about 8 a.m., the said defendant, Cooper Fitzgerald, did operate a gray 2013 Buick LaCrosse on West Utica Street and Liberty Street in Oswego, New York. Said defendant did operate the motor vehicle in an intoxicated condition, having a blood alcohol level of 0.12, and did have a motor vehicle collision with a gray 2007 Chevy Malibu, which resulted in the death of Ian Cady, who was a passenger in that vehicle. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. How you wish to proceed on that one? I not guilty, Your Honor. So entered. You're also charged with vehicular assault in the second degree. To wit, on 5-17-2024, at about 8 a.m., the said defendant, Cooper Fitzgerald, did operate a great 2013 Buick LaCrosse on West Utica Street and Liberty Street in Oswego, New York. Said defendant did operate the motor vehicle in an intoxicated condition, having a blood alcohol level of 0.12, and did have a motor vehicle collision with a gray 2007 Chevy Malibu. Said motor vehicle caused collision caused serious physical injury to Thomas Kerwin, who was a passenger in the defendant's vehicle. Said serious physical injury consisted of an amputation of the victim, Thomas Kerwin's right arm. I wish to proceed on that. I don't plead not guilty. Okay. People would like to be heard on bail. Good morning, Your Honor. Anthony DiMartino, District Attorney in County of Oswego. Your Honor, the, uh, the people have had the opportunity to review the defendant's, uh, the alleged defendant's criminal history. We note for the court that he has no criminal history. 
Uh, however, due to the the uh, seriousness of the charges and to ensure his continued appearance before this court, and the fact that one person was uh, killed and one person was seriously injured, the people are requesting bail in the amount of $2 million cash, $2 million bond, and $2 million bond, unsecured bond, with 10% uh, security. Would you also request that his driving privileges be suspended during the process of this matter? Just to be heard? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, given my client's young age and lack of criminal history, we would request that they'll be set up a lower amount. Okay, basically, first of all, his license will be suspended as, as the district attorney had, had indicated or requested. Um, it is unfortunate here. We have a young man who has no criminal history, but based upon the facts herein, I'm going to set bail at $2 million cash, $2 million insurance bond, and $2 million at 10%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go set. Sorry about that, guys. In New York State, drivers under the age of 21 are subject to zero tolerance laws. If a driver who is under the age of 21 has any alcohol in their system, so 0.02% or higher, BAC, which is the equivalent of one drink, they are in violation of this law. In the event that you are witnessing, the driver's BAC was significantly higher, in addition to having committed criminally negligent homicide or vehicular manslaughter. This raises the charges to felony level offenses, which means that the offender may face significant jail time, loss of driving privileges, and high fines. His sentence may also include restitution for damages or funeral expenses. These legal consequences are just one piece of the fallout for the driver. He will have to answer for this choice to his family, to his friends, and to his community. If he has been accepted to college or received scholarships to attend, he will likely lose those. When he eventually looks for employment, having such serious charges in his legal history will make it very difficult for him to find a job. The day of the crash is just the beginning of a long road of consequences for his actions. The consequences of driving while intoxicated can be lifelong or even deadly. However, being the passenger in a vehicle with an impaired driver can also have huge uh, consequences. Our guest speaker today is Wendy Peters. She's going to share her story with you. Good morning, everybody. Um, as Stacy said, my name is Wendy Peters, and what you were viewing outside was showing you something that could happen if you chose to drink and drive or get into the car with a friend who's been drinking. The story that I want to share with you is 26 and a half years ago, um, I actually made the choice to get into the car with a friend who had been drinking. Um, if you're familiar with State Route 49 heading towards like Central Square, there's an intersection of 49 and kind of 54 in the town of Scruple is where the car crash took place that I was involved in. It happened November 6 of 1997. Um, I was told, I actually have no memory of the night of the crash or the first 30 days in the hospital. I was told that my friend had a blood alcohol content of 0.16. He ran the stop sign at the intersection, crashed into another car. Um, my friend died instantly and the girl that was the only person in the other car, the driver, she was ejected and she also died. Um, I will share the rest of my story after you see the video that I want to show you. As you're watching the video, I was the passenger in the red car.
I said, I have no memory of the night of this crash or the first 30 days in the hospital. Um, I had a crushed broken arm, which I had a plate in, but I was able to have the plate removed. I had a crushed broken leg, which I have a titanium rod in that's there permanently. I had a laceration in my liver, ruptured spleen, internal bleeding. Whatever I hit my head on in the car was down to the bone on my forehead and peeled back to the top of my head, which I suffered a traumatic brain injury from. I was in a coma for two weeks, had amnesia for two weeks, and I died three times. Um, so i am often been told that it's probably a good thing that I don't remember anything, but on the same line, it's also frustrating not having a memory of something that totally altered your life for the rest of your life. Um, not just your life, but your family's lives, two other families' lives, um, first responders that show up, it affects them also. Um, I know during my amnesia time, I didn't remember my family, my parents, my siblings, um, uh, my husband at the time, and just, I didn't remember anybody, but it was two weeks after the amnesia, I woke up and finally remembered everybody in my family. Um, but uh, during that time, the two very most important people that I did not remember at that time were my kids. I have two sons. They were actually two and four at the time of this car crash. Thankfully, they were young enough where they don't remember anything at the time. But to this day, when once they got to high school and was able to be talked about drinking and driving and friends and cars, it was drilled into them to not do it, um, protect yourselves, protect the people that you're with. Um, so they've always known about this. In the video in the beginning that you saw, um, the music video where the two cars make contact with each other, you see the family members getting thrown in every which way direction. That's probably very true. My mom will always remember getting the knock on the door and being told, your daughter's been in a horrible crash, you need to get to the hospital because she may not survive. Um, at that point, it's like you're thrown up against the wall and the air is taken out of you and you can't breathe. Um, my, I come from a large family, so everybody comes home from out of town, out of state. Uh, my brother, who still lives in Pennsylvania, he did then, uh, you know, brought a suit home with him at the time, five hour drive, didn't know if he'd be going to my funeral or not by the time he got here. Um, so it's been 26 and a half years, but it's something that stays with you forever. Uh, my oldest son is actually 30 right now, he'll be 31 in a couple months. Um, he graduated summa cum laude from Syracuse University. He lived down in Arlington, Virginia for about nine years, worked at a political consulting firm, um, decided it was time to move on, and decided he got a new job, can work remote from anywhere, lives in Portland, Oregon. Um, he's a director of research manager for a company that he's with doing very, very, very well for himself. And I hate the fact, as a mom, that he lives on the West Coast, but hopefully he'll come back to the East Coast. Um, but I have thanked God every day that I have been here and raised him and be his mom and see everything that he's done and doing and what he's accomplished. Um, and I'm, I know all your parents, the same with you. You know, God forbid if something ever happened to you, you know, it's time is cut short very quickly. Uh, my younger son is 28. He'll be 29 in August. He actually graduated from Binghamton University with a bachelor's and master's in engineering and science, went on to Rutgers University in New Jersey, graduated last May at the age of 27 with a PhD in biomedical engineering. Um, he works for a very, very well-known company called Siemens. Um, he also is doing fantastic for himself. He and his girlfriend, who started dating in high school, so 11 years ago, um, they're actually getting married in October. And again, thankful, very blessed, and couldn't even imagine not being here and seeing everything. Um, I, I would be missing my son's wedding coming up. I would be missing any future grandkids. I you know, would be missing everything that's ahead of them. And, it's a really horrible thought to think about all the time. Um, everything, everything you do is about choices that you make. It's not just today, tomorrow, next year. It's 10 years down the road. It's 
you know, when you're 75 years old. It's still a choice, a decision that you're going to have to make. And if you think about it from the time that you wake up every morning, every single thing that you do, say, whatever is a choice that you make. Um, I mean, sit there and think for a few minutes. I mean, if you're a junior, you're going to be a senior. If you're a senior, you're going to be graduating. Um, whether you're going to school, work, traveling the world for a year, whatever it is you're going to do or you want to do, you make the wrong choice and none of that is going to happen. Um, you guys have your whole futures ahead of you and it's a wonderful thing if just please don't make the wrong choice. Um, um, talk, to your, talk to your parents, share this story with your parents. Um, you can actually on YouTube, really uh, stupid name for it, but it's just Wendy's car crash or something like that on YouTube. Share it with them, talk to them. Um, you know, talk to your parents about not drinking and driving, and if you ever get into a situation, you know, you're going to experiment, you're going to think it's cool, and it's just, if you're at a party and you see your friends drinking and they grab their keys, do what you need to do to make sure that they're not getting on the road driving. Um, if they're mad at you for a couple days, so be it, but you'll be alive, they'll be alive, and you can hang out again sometime. Um, so all I can ask you is just please look ahead to your futures and if you make the wrong choice it can be cut really short as I said and you don't want that to happen so please enjoy yourselves but make the right choice. Thank you Wendy for sharing your story we appreciate it. So you guys heard Wendy as far as she is explaining to you guys that you need to make a plan, right? So our biggest, our motto for the Stop DWI program is that we want you to have a plan. And we want you to have that plan in place before you have your first drink, before you go to the party. You guys need to know what that looks like. If you guys get into a situation where you're in trouble, what does that look like for you? Do you guys have people that you can call? Do you take keys from each other? Can you call an Uber or an, a Lyft? Can you rely on your parents, your cousins, your friends? Those are things that you guys need to be thinking about because our goal today is to make sure that there are no empty seats for graduation. We want you guys to make it through prom safely. We want you guys to make sure that you make it to your graduation and that you live the lives that you were meant to lead. In the days following the crash, the family has planned a funeral service. They have to figure out burial details, fill out paperwork, select a casket, and write an obituary. Friends and family will come together to mourn the loss of a life that was taken far too soon.
My name is Mason Krolovich. Today we are gathered to remember my best friend, Ian Katie. I had known Ian since preschool. We did just about everything together growing up. He was one of my closest friends. Hearing about a situation like this, I didn't think it was real at first. The emotions I felt when I heard it, heard about it are unexplainable. Two of my closest friends were involved in a fatal car crash, one responsible for the passing of another. My father once told me that we are the sum of the people we surround ourselves with, and I think that's true. Losing Ian is losing a big part of myself, one of the best parts. He and I had been through everything together. He was one of the most hardworking and determined people I knew, never giving up or stopping at something until he finished it, which wasn't always my favorite thing about him if we were arguing. He was an amazing athlete and an even better student. I don't think I'll be able to think about the things that involves him the way I used to. I won't feel the same hanging out in the friend group that he belongs in or playing on a sports team that he should be on. I won't spend another summer with him or see him on school breaks. All of the moments that used to feel normal to share with him are gone. The tragedy of his life being cut so short is devastating to those that knew him. I am more than grateful to have known Ian and to have been a part of his life. Anyone who knew him should be. He was one of the happiest people to be around and it would always rub off on you no matter how you were feeling. I'd also like to say something to Ian's family. To Lucas and Leah, your brother meant so much to me, and I'm so happy I was lucky enough to have known him. And to Mr. and Mrs. Katie, I don't think he could have done a better job at raising Ian into the person that he was. And to everyone else here today, I want you all to take a moment and think about what you're doing the next time you make a decision. Tell your friends and family how much you love them, because you never know when your next moment will be your last. Thank you. tragedy will have a ripple effect 
and those affected by the nightmare for years to come. How will one of his closest friends, Cooper, cope with this guilt for the rest of his life? I know this is a very heavy topic that no one wants to think will ever happen to them, but it does. As the warmer weather approaches and the activities such as prom, grad parties, and summer get closer, you need to make smarter decisions. Do not ever, ever drive or let a friend drive while under the influence of alcohol or any other drug. This should never have happened to Ian and his friends. This was preventable. As our kids have gotten older, I find myself saying the same thing to them every time they leave the house. Have fun, love you, and DVD, which meant don't be dumb. We have talked to our kids over the years about how their decisions can have such serious consequences. One bad decision changed our lives forever. Ian was an amazing son, brother, grandchild, and friend. We will never see him graduate from high school or the Naval Academy. We will never see him get married or have our grandchildren. We will never get to watch him play his favorite sport of hockey that has given us so much joy to watch over the years. Things will never be the same again for any of us affected by this horrible day. What I hope you all will take away from this is to watch out for each other and help one another make smart choices in DVD. Throughout my life, I've been told to never drink and drive. Although I never did, my life was taken from someone making that mistake. That someone was one of my best friends. Cooper will now have to live the rest of his life knowing that he killed one of his best buddies all because he thought he was safe to drive. I'm sure he never would have imagined this outcome after driving home under the influence. I will miss out on a lot of amazing things that I was looking forward to experiencing. I won't get to go to the Naval Academy, which was my dream college, get married and have a family of my own someday, travel the world, play hockey again, or even graduate high school. I won't get to accomplish the long list of goals I have for my future. All of these experiences will now be stripped away from me. I was very close with all of my family. I will never know where my younger sister will go to college or what my older brother will decide to do for his career. My parents, as well as my siblings, will be devastated to hear that I was killed in a drunk driving accident. It will crush them more to hear it was Cooper who was driving the other car. I hope they can forgive him someday for making this awful decision. To everyone going to prom, please be smart and don't make any reckless decisions. If you are under the influence, you won't be thinking clearly. Make the right decision for calling for a ride. I promise anyone will be happier to pick you up than to hear about your death. Most importantly, do not get behind the wheel if you have done anything. This could be you next. If I could, would everybody stand? I'd like to have you file from the, the, my left, one row at a time, pass the casket, the family to pay your final respects to Ian.